All right, the things I'm talking about here in this video, all facts. We're talking about the ranking system, the leaderboard system in NBA 2K. It's flawed for a many number of reasons, but the most major one is it doesn't reward skill, it rewards time played, and that's frustrating. We all ran against the 91 overall who can't play for his life, Probably on my career, dishing flashy passes, hitting floaters, stepping back, pulling up from limitless range, all game racking up 100K points a game. And it's, it's usually those same guys with the high ranked as booty cheeks that will refuse to play with lower overall players purely because of their overall. It gets boring. You don't feel like you need to level up, right? I, I feel at any given moment, I feel like I really wanna hop on Rainbow so that I can play and rank up to a Platinum so that I can feel that I'm nice at the game, right? Now, there is a correlation. The more you play a game, the better you should be at it. But it's not a flat line correlation. The guy who played the most is gonna be the best. We know that. You don't need me to sit here and tell you that. But there's a, a, a lot of games recently, and Rainbow Six is probably my favorite example. It's a game that I understand. I'm sure League of Legends, Dota, CSGO, a lot of these games have growing fan bases. So while most games will drop and then trail off, those games will drop and then go up, which is insane if you think about it. Oh, you could also like, eh, it probably has a lot to do with the, the cool Black Friday sales. <laughs> Yo, I seen CSGO drop for like $5 and I, you know, I don't even play CSGO, but I can't say no to $5. All right, I'm gonna use Rainbow Six as an example. For those who don't play the game, there's two different types of ranking systems. There's one ranking system that you can just keep playing and it rewards time play. So you're running against people that have like a 200 and you don't really think too much of it because just cause you play the game a lot does not mean you're nice at the game and nobody even checks for that rank. It's almost irrelevant but it exists. And that's the type of ranking system 2K has. You just play the game over and over and over and over again. You don't have to get better. All you have to do is keep playing and you'll continuously go up in rank 92, 93, 94, 95, right? But Rainbow also has a ranked system. But the system on Rainbow Six that really only focuses on wins or losses separates the good players from the bad players. And unlike 2K where there's a lot of randomness that goes on in percentages. You shoot the ball, 60% chance it goes in. On Rainbow, clear cut. If you can't make your shot, you're gonna get shot. And in those lobbies, there's a very clear difference between plat lobbies and gold lobbies. On gold lobbies, you might get a chance to make a mistake and still kill the guy. On plat lobbies, you're getting gunned down the second you make a mistake. And as frustrating as it is sometimes to be at the top of the leaderboard consistently with a trash team and you're losing and you're going down in rank, I feel so addicted to wanting to just rank myself up. There's just something about knowing that you could actually go down in rank that motivates you to continue playing to improve and to get better. When I'm playing Tekken, I could be a grandmaster rank. I lose six games straight, I'm dropping down to expert. And then I hop on the next day like, I gotta get back to Grandmaster. Once I'm Grandmaster, I wanna get to Marauder. If you can't go down in a ranking system, it's not a ranking system. How can you possibly rank people if you can't go down for poor performance? And on 2K, it's a little more complex because there's so many variables. Like, a lot of it is IQ, especially on Pro-Am, if you're a big man, the getting rebounds and just blocking out the right guy, rotating properly on the zones, avoiding defensive three in the keys, all of that is just IQ. But there's a way to quantify that. If they could just sit down and figure that out. In the same way they've done it on Pro-Am, where all they really care about is wins and losses, right? If you beat really good teams, you're gonna climb up Elite Four, Elite Five, Elite Six. And so right now, I'm fiending because I wanna get my team to Elite Four. But I know in the back of my mind, if I play around and I lose like 10 games straight for whatever reason, I'm not gonna stay Elite Three. How could you be possibly motivated to improve if you know there's no possible way you can go down? So on 2K, it's really just about abusing a flawed point system. If you're a big man, you're not gonna get enough points, but does that mean you're a worse player? Why are you lower down in the rankings? Honestly, I wish there was like a, a robust version of the Pro-Am ranking system on the park. I get the whole road to 99 thing, aside from the fact that you have to restart if you make a new player. I actually like the idea, but I don't feel intrigued to wanna hop on and play. I've never felt really like I cared about my rank. Last year I was a superstar one and I stopped caring, period. The year before, I think I was like an all-star three. Like you couldn't get me on the game at double XP. First of all, it was the laggiest time of year. Second of all, I really just didn't care, man. See on Rainbow Six, I can run against the guys that play a ton and you can see their time played and I can sauce those guys. It will be a shame 
if for whatever reason Ubisoft ranked me lower than those guys just because I don't play the game as much. I'm making moves, I got videos to make, a lot of the time I'm playing 2K, but when I wanna hop on Rainbow, I know in the back of my mind I'm a gold one. Really, I, I play like I'm a plat two, I'm not gonna lie to y'all, man. I, I'm not be a plot one. I just, I play with a lot of suspect teams, y'all. I can't tell you how many. Yo, ever since I unlocked Legion on Rainbow Six, I got a 2.2 KD. Like, you know, I'm killing the game. You know what I'm talking about. I, I don't know how much you specifically play games, but at least 70% of the people watching this have once been OD addicted to a game, whether that game was RuneScape, some of y'all know about RuneScape. As a kid, bro, I used to be on RuneScape. I used to be addicted to SOCOM. And for a game like 2K that touts that it's a RPG, last year they said it, it was the best RPG sports title ever released. You, the whole point of RPGs is you're supposed to grow with your players. It's a role-playing game, but it doesn't feel like you're growing when the tasks are often tedious and you don't feel rewarded for how good you are. You know, to be honest, like I feel like a lot of people think they're better than they really are on any game in general, but on 2K especially. Have you ever had a conversation with your friend that went something like, yo, I can sauce you in 2K, and your friend replies, you probably can. No matter how trash your friend is, he's gonna say he can sauce you back. That's just the way it is on 2K. And pro -Am has a very simple, basic version of what I'm talking about. And for me, it's not as trivial as, I just wanna see if I'm 1,000th in the world. It's not about that. It's about feeling like you have something to work towards. And feeling that you can work towards it by improving, not just playing more. I don't know, to be honest, 2K has never had a system like that. Pretty much any game, they, every, anybody watching the industry will see so many games coming out with the exact same system. You know, with variations to adjust to what their game is about, but everybody's running the same style now, right? One game blows up and succeeds and everyone's trying to pick apart what that game did successfully. Except 2K. That's how I'm feeling, yo. Hey, uh, there's no reason for you to disagree with me. The only reason you want to disagree with me is if you're that specific person that's ass at every game he plays but just plays a lot. If that's you, then that's my problem with 2K, is you shouldn't be that high. You're overrated. I can't even trust people now. Agent, I'm a 93 overall, and uh, I'm trying to play with your pro-am team. I don't know if they're nice. I have no idea because there's no real way to see unless you actually get a chance to sit down and play with him. I hope this stuff is just obvious. Like, I'm not saying anything that's like super in depth, like, whoa, agent, you just really thought of that by yourself? No, actually, I just play other games and I've seen so many other developers do it. And it makes sense because I really enjoy it on those other games. If y'all remember Road to the All-Star game last year, it was really just who could learn and abuse the point system first. I mean, if you want the best possible teams in a, all, in a, in a pro am tournament, just do double elimination. What are you talking about? Get a tournament with the top 1,000 teams on Pro-Am, run a double elimination tournament, and then if you lose, you go to the loser's bracket, and whoever makes it out wins and qualifies. How is that not the first thing people think of? Why would you implement a point system that could easily be abused? If you're looking for the best teams, that's all you had to have done. You have three months, get into the top 1,000 Pro-Am, and then you qualify to get into the qualifiers, Boom! At least to me, that seems obvious. But, but 2K does a lot of point systems. I don't know what their obsession is with doing points. I don't, I don't like point systems. Anyway, if you guys enjoy, man, uh, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you guys are new. Hey, some videos popping on the screen right now. If you haven't watched them already, go ahead, click on them. I'm gonna catch you guys later. I'm out. Peace.